What's up, y'all? In this video for the Residential Locksmith Starter Series, we are going to be going over National, or what was also known as Westlock National. So this kind of follows our last video in the series that was on Westlock. If you missed it, I'll put this or the playlist or whatever up here in the corner. But we have actually done this video before, a whopping five years ago. It was one of our very first videos uh, out there and this is actually the same lock so i do have keys for it because in that video we made these keys for it but we're actually going to pretend like we don't have keys for it now this is one of those uh, and i'm also revisiting this because it kind of falls into the i mean you can't do the residential life and start a series without doing one on national because national was around they kind of faded out of existence like in the 80s era 80s 85 so as with the westlock unless you just have somebody insistent on uh, Riki and their existing locks, since a lot of people have Quickset or Wiser or Quickset, not Wiser anymore, huh? Or Schlage in their house, almost always when you come up on these, they haven't been used in a while, so they may be corroded, they may be broken. There's a ton of reasons why it's best nowadays to just go ahead and replace these. But if you have a pristine model like this and like that, and you have a house full of them maybe they don't want to spend the money on it. i don't know it's up to you but as always there are people out there that are going to be like just replace that knob this is ridiculous what are you wasting your time for well just this is if you it's locksmithing uh normally i don't pick these on camera i think i did on this one but what nationals have like a real small diameter core uh and it's also one of the only ones where you need a pin punch to take apart the knob. So let's go ahead and pretend like we're A, locked out of this thing and we have to make keys for it for whatever reason. Oh, the deadbolt is, is actually not keyed. So we do, we do have to do the deadbolt. Oh no, we're locked out of the door now. We gotta get into it before we can make keys for it. Now, if you happen to have watched that video from five years ago, you know that we did repin this completely so all five pins are in there uh but it's typically and i say it's usually not hard to get into it uh it's usually not you're gonna have to probably lubricate it it's always a good idea to lubricate before your whole obligatory sign before you start picking on a lock but one good thing about this guy was you could turn it out and and then take a take a key and like run it in and out yeah that'll That'll help. Uh, usually the only thing you have to worry about when you're opening one of these is the, the corrosion part. And the key will turn both ways to unlock. Did we unlock? So you can turn it either way. If you're not having any luck one way, you can turn it the other way. Because it is a, uh, a push button mechanism. And, uh, you know, I say it's not hard to pick these, but, you know, Jason keyed this last time five years ago. So, the rule of thumb is if you do your job right and you key up a lock, five years later when somebody loses that key, they call you back and say, hey, can you, can you open the door for me? I accidentally locked it. And you're like, sure. And they're like, yeah, you were here like five years ago. There it goes. And, and, you, uh, and you keyed it up and you're like, that's why it's taking so long to open because I did such a damn good job five years ago. Anyway. Let's... Oh, son of a So one good thing about it, one good thing and bad thing, one good thing about it there, we're going to unpick it, is uh, it does have a retainer. So once it's unlocked, you just uh, push in your retainer there. I'm trying to do this through the camera and it never works out as easy as literally just doing it. No, you do have to have the key turn. I forgot about that shit. You do have to leave it out. I, I unpicked it. And that was kind of stupid because on these, you do have to turn the key to depress the retainer. Some locks just have to be in an unlocked position, but things like Schlage or whatever, you have to have the key or you have to pick it. And that was the same way for this guy. So let me re-pick this and then we'll continue on the video. <laughs> Stupid Jason. 
Are you gonna are you gonna do what you're supposed to do? Of course not. Cause Jason keyed it. Come on, work with me here. What are you doing? Okay, oh, did we get it? I think we got it in it, in the thing fell out. Be gentle, be gentle, be gentle. Okay, there we go. Okay, I can't remember whether, if it's like halfway turned, we can still get it, or if it has to be fully turned, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna poke that retainer right there if you can see it. Boom, just like that. Okay, be careful. Be very careful. Because this is one of those plugs that you don't want to fall down in the hole. Because it's kind of like a Schlage compressible core, but not. So that little, look at that little bitty tiny bobble. Uh, so yeah, you got to be real careful. If it, it, it can definitely fall down in the hole, and well, that's horrible. Son of a bitch. So here goes the important thing. You don't have to take it off. If it's tight and it's functioning fine, you don't have to do this. But if you're changing it out, this is where it kind of comes into uh, the part where you're like, how does this come off the door? Uh, in fact, I've seen a number of posts, which just pop that off. There's a little notch you can put a screwdriver in and pop it off, but I knew it was going to pop off. So that exposes that, and, and then people will unscrew it. And you just have to unscrew it a little bit to be able to twist this rosette. Yeah, just like that. Nope, oh, a little bit more. And this comes off. Now, you can either push your retainer in, or you can turn this until it gets to the area where the retainer will so they actually very nicely put a cutout right there for you. All right, so this is where it trips up everybody. How do I how do I get that off? Now normally, just like with the West Lock, you you turn it, you turn that, and and it'll let you pull it off. But sometimes it won't. So you do have to be prepared to grab your flathead screwdriver and stick in there and get it off. Now most time it comes off fairly easily. But if you look, when you press the latch down right here, it does not pull that in. That's two independent spring mechanisms. So the hard part is putting it back on because this has to line up with that. And you can see that kind of gets in the way. That, that's not how that goes back on. It literally has to be catching on these two grooves right here, here and here. And if you try to do that, you can see this is in the way. So you, you physically have to push this back with a, a screwdriver and then try to guide it on just like that. Make sure you get it in the grooves. And we're going to put this back on before we re-kit. Uh, so if you had to take it off, that is the how you take it off and, and put it back on because it can be a little tricky. So we're going to tighten this back down and be ready to put our outside knob on. Also, the outside is adjustable. If this isn't tightening down for some reason, like and it's still loose, basically your outside trim is adjustable, kind of like a commercial door lock or many others actually, but this will screw down. So if you screw it down, it'll make it tighter for thinner doors. So this is a thinner door. It would need to be screwed down a little bit more than it was because it was probably set for a three to, uh, inch and three quarter door there. All right, so we did, we tightened that down and we're just gonna pop this guy back on. Uh, tab maybe on this side, right there, nope. Right there. You know, I honestly don't believe where any of these tabs, tabs go, does this go? Oh, let's go that way, oh, there, okay. I think that's right and then of course, 
Put your knob back on. Push your retainer in. Now, deadbolt. It's just the standard deadbolt. Just unscrew it. Every so often, like we'll look up when we get it to the counter up here, you do run across some with a, a non-removable screw. Just like Wiser and a few other companies have always done. So that may require you to use a big flathead or one of the specialty uh, drivers. So that, that's it. That's not that bad for the deadbolt. So I did want to show you my Westlock key and kit that I failed to show you in the previous actual Westlock video. Uh, and it is a pretty awesome kit as all of them were back then. Even has those springs. Remember that spring that I had to replace and I said it's fairly stiff. Here are the actual springs, actual part number 12193 and they are so stiff you can you can barely squeeze them together with your fingertips as well as some springs now these actually springs would come in handy for certain uses because they are shorter there's a lot of manufacturers out there that uh, use really short springs in their top so it'd be a good idea for me to actually take some of those out and use them caps some people in that video after I posted it, now that's for the Vanguard. There's a different spring. Hmm. Uh, some people in that video posted that they like uh, the new Westlock, uh, and you're entitled to your opinion. So this shows uh, kind of two different styles. Neither one of them, uh, this one I think was the one we did, so that would have been the 1100 series, and there was the older style that kind of looks like what we're about to see with the knob except it was designed a little bit differently shortest pin size there is uh not much less than a 156 and i'm going to bring that up because when you are cutting the keys for these guys always cut your keys deeper than like a four because the small diameter of the plug we're not going to be using any pins even on the ninth depth we're not going to go beyond about 240 243 but one interesting thing to note is the different plug styles these were almost like a wiser style but obviously they're national national key fits in them and uh, we see this with the old 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 wiser dead bolts where it has two screws and one screw on each side of the double cylinder deadbolt. This may actually be a rim cylinder. Maybe. No, it can't be a rim cylinder because there's only one screw on the outside. It has to be a double cylinder uh, deadbolt, I would think. I don't know what that was, but I bring that up because the core on these are actually the regular half inch core. Now, I cut these keys, not this one, but I cut these keys on the card 40 national rockford large pen uh if you have a frame in you would use the 1064 d in a6 which is actually also an na25 weirdly enough they kind of discontinued uh the na6s jma may have them Woo, resonant but most of the major distributors only carry the na25 which is the same key with just a different head so there also is a 1064D, which is the reverse of the R1064E, in this case, the head of it. And you can see it's the exact copy of it. But you very air, rarely, rarely run across those. Almost, I've got a bunch of them, and I've, I don't even think I've ever cut one of those. So I prefer cutting these on the framing machine, but whatever you have will work. I would suggest if you're using this card to widen the cuts a little bit kind of like we did on westlock maybe not to that extent but a little oomph oomph left and right uh will come in handy later on as we see so we're going to go ahead and push the pen down into this deadbolt core being very careful the bar is kind of thick and sh not tall not wide so here's a wiser latch see the uh the difference the width it's only about three quarters of the width of most standard deadbolt bars. 
so while you could use a wiser bolt to replace this which these aren't made anymore any anyway but you couldn't use really a thicker tailpiece on the latch because it's pretty much it's pretty much that all right got that one apart and uh we got this picked remember to this nine o'clock or three o'clock position so if one thing when you're putting this back together and you always forget to do this it's got a ridge on it that ridge has to align with the bible right there so right now it's in the nine o'clock position and we're going to drive this pin out with our 330 second pin punch uh sometimes most of the time you'll see it sticking out a little bit further and that lets you have a hole to put that in so <laughs> you could chuck this up in the vise and do this grab your hammer i'm holding it so i can feel the pin kind of punch through there and uh, again depending on how long this guy's been off there i can feel it jabbing into my finger uh may this may not be easy to do all right we're stuck there come on off use my hammer Ah, it already came out yeah all right take that off make sure this is turned to now there is a hole but you you and you'll see once we get in this plug you want to have that turned exactly to the nine o'clock or three o'clock position whichever side you're on but that does expose that hole and as i mentioned you have a smaller diameter plug so your half inch plug as a regular standard plug follower is not going to fit and if you see this HPC set down here, that is the hollow plug follower set. Now, you don't need that, but this is one of the best. And I don't keep it in this. I'm just using this for a video. This thing, I, I, just, I don't even need that. It's got the 550, the 495, which that's not even the HPC version, and then a smaller one. Now, with uh, that, you could also use, weirdly enough, the wiser tool actually is a little bit bigger diameter. But we're going to use this because some of you may not have that wiser tool and we're going to push that push that through at the same time to bridge that gap Bump. all right and you see why we turned it to the 90 degree position there if we would have had it at 45 we would have had some issues with this what probably is a construction a weird construction bearing ball bearing thing that is really deep for a i don't know what that is uh so anyway we're going to key it up to it it already is keyed up to it but we're going to get rid of those we cut uh i think we got like four six six four seven uh we're going to go all the way over here because i believe yep four depth is a 186 and you see why now to stay three or four below three would be 162 165 so that's four the fourth one is four so we're going to grab another one of those all right then we got six six now normally you'd go all from if that's four you would kind of go five six so we'll try the 216 uh that's a little high so let's knock it back down to 210 Maybe it's not six, maybe it's five. Let's go down to 201. Um, that is a little shallow. In fact, that makes it look, the other ones look like they're a little higher. Let's get rid of those. There is no, as, as I'll post here, there is no actual numbering system for national. So that's one thing that can be a problem and you just kind of have to guess your way through all right and then next size down maybe we'll go to there there we go all right uh, we're going to set that aside actually I, you know i wouldn't normally do that in the field i would put it back together always finish one before you start the other one so we're going to get that we're going to bridge the gap and push 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 pull 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 push pull push pull there we go check it and we 
we need to shim our deadbolt. Grab that shim that we just used. Shim shimmeru. Now I knew those top pins and springs were okay, but as always, if you're working on this for the first time, check your top pins and springs. Okay, got it turned. Not as important, but 90 degrees. You can leave your shim in there if you like doing it that way. That's always the safest way to do it. Uh, here I'm using this. Normally, I would probably grab this guy and push it through. Okay, it's been several days, y'all. You know, we had a trade show that we had to go to, so I was not able to finish this video in time, but I do want to go ahead and knock it out. We had already, I believe, keyed this up to this key so i actually didn't i thought i did have this on video but i didn't so i want to show you if there's any discrepancies between the knob and the deadbolt so we used initially 186 and we dropped it to 180 for that one so we're just going to use the same pins that we used for the doorknob to see if that's right and i believe the fourth position was also going to be a 180 yep and then the we started off 216 that was a little high so we dropped it all the way down to 201 so we're going to check that yep yep and then that last one was 216 so we just needed to verify that it used the same pins carry on everything's nice and smooth again this is the smaller diameter plug and I am using this wiser tool to bridge the gap. So when I'm putting this back together, obviously, once again, I didn't say it because I know these pins are good, but you do want to check your pins and springs in there to make sure everything is bouncing up, which it is on this one. Uh, you can do one of two things, remembering always to turn your plug to the right way. This is not the greatest way to turn it. So if you're looking at the face of the plug, you'd probably want to go to the three o'clock position, which I normally don't do that. I would go to like this position and kind of hold it different because putting it in this way, you have a chance of dumping your pens out. So I'm going to just kind of going to go to about seven o'clock position. And I'm going to push down on the Bible right there. And what that does is it lifts all those pens up and then there is some kind of gap again you could take a shim this is the safest way to do it now you know if you're if you're if you're learning you want to go as safe as possible so in this case i would push up on it and then run the shim through as i'm uh, as i'm as i'm kind of doing this so do 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 and then pull your shim out but if you didn't want to do that then you would just take this push down on it and then follow it through so i'm pushing down so that it's lifting all the pins and springs up going to about seven o'clock or three o'clock and pushing them through just like that and kind of got to wiggle 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 sometimes it catches boom just like that in and check hold make sure and hold that and at that point we just have to put it all back together with our retainer pin there with our retainer spring there with our retainer pin there and our cap and tail piece always turn it till you see the little open slot right there and i'm just going to hold it put it down on top of that get my needle nose or my sharper tweezers make sure this is rotating correctly tighten it down all the way then back it off one or two depending on the the, the lock tighten down okay it's all the way is it all the way tight all the way tight back it off one may not be enough but we'll check it good way to tell is if you turn it and you start feeling resistance as you're turning it then you probably need to back it off one this one we've got no resistance so we're good and at that point, you shouldn't be pushing in on the plug. You should just be pulling the key like in use. So like that, that, turn, 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 pull out. 
and we are good to go so we are going to go ahead and get this put it back in there uh we got to put this back together remember there's a notch on this cap it goes into the bible because if you put it this way you're never going to get this in to that it just won't fit so one of the things that always gets messed up and you have to re re undo it is is that you want that notch on the bible you want your holes to line up grab your pen push it into the plastic grab your hammer and get it in there centered you kind of want it slightly below the surface there slightly below. i mean that's exactly made for that all right finger your hole so put my finger in there push this in until it's touching my finger and then use your finger to guide it around and in we got really lucky that way hold this get your key and make sure your key is in there so that it does not drop in all right let's go ahead and move the camera over get these assembled i can't remember where i left off but again yeah westlock national you have these types of cores that uses the half inch plug just a regular plug follower we'll use different depths because of that because this plug is smaller diameter the bigger plug is going to use a different set of pins yet another good reason why to have a you know 003 or 05 whichever you prefer 003 is better did i say that out loud i did let's go to the other camera put these back on and we're done okay we have our key holding it in we're gonna make sure and turn this back out to the position where it's like halfway there just to make sure that's not going to go anywhere the retainer hole obviously needs to be right there so we're going to turn that just like that slip it on uh, you can use anything you can use a quick set poker you can use whatever else but if i'm working on a deadbolt combination door lock on a door you know that makes a good poker right there so basically i'll come in here and i'll poke that down push it in and believe we did have to turn it nope we didn't have to turn that one okay some you do some you don't push it in locked unlocked key comes out again locked unlocked key comes out this one on the deadbolt you want to notice one thing about the deadbolt shroud is see how it has these cutouts uh, that goes where the latch is so if you try to put it in remember thinner door thinner installation but if you try to put it in like this on some doors this part where the cutout isn't will hit the latch you don't want that so you want to make sure and turn that just like it's supposed to be this is kind of common across a few deadbolts on this particular one it's a vertical so we're going to stop and we're going to check this and we're going to see we're going to turn this till it stops horizontal stop at nine o'clock and it travels to 12 o'clock and then to three o'clock since we're vertical here we're going to center this which would be nine o'clock three o'clock centered slip it in just like that boop if we spin this around It's gonna make it incredibly harder for me but if we look down here yeah just like that you want to turn your thumb turn make sure that tailpiece goes in there so it did oh it did until i let it go all right and uh i don't have a screwdriver with me today so let me reach over here and grab the closest screwdriver i have which is going to be the vessel and then what I do is using my fingers on this side and a key possibly. So I'm gonna straighten it up as much as possible. See right now, it's not going anywhere. That's because the screw is poking too far in. So I'm gonna back these screws out. We're gonna line up the lock as vertical as you can. And then go back to where the screws are. Come, 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 come. Put them through. 
nothing. So I'm taking my fingers and I'm wiggling the outside until I feel that screw drop in. Not that far, that means we missed. That means the bolt or the outside trim is not vertical. So I wiggled it around with my fingertips over here. Yep, felt the screw drop in. It's starting to screw in. Get that one in, it's starting to screw in. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and tighten it down. Not all the way tight. Get it loose. Some doors you're definitely gonna be able to see where it's been, which for the most part may be right, but it may or may not be. So like we got some slack right there and we got some slack right there. I'm gonna answer the phone. Oh, price check, price check, price check. All right, make sure you're covering your old outline that may or may not be there. Hold it straight, flip it around, and then we're gonna slowly tighten the screws little by little. So there, there. I'm gonna go ahead and check my thumb turn, it works. And then uh, a little bit more, a little bit more. Check our key, it works. Check to make sure the key comes out. It works. And we are done. Snug it up a little bit more, maybe. Doop. Doop. Still works. And still works. So we are done with that one. And hopefully this will be the last national video that I do, unless I have another weird one come up one day, but I felt like it was important for the residential locksmith starter series, which I'm gonna put the whole playlist at the end here. And we are getting very close to getting diplomas. We're gonna have a test on all, well, some, well, kinda. We're gonna have a test to see how well you paid attention during this whole residential locksmith starter series, which is coming to a close with just a few more. Of course, there's always a ton of other stuff. And I know some of y'all are gonna be like, you didn't cover this, you didn't cover that. You know, maybe one day I'll just kind of add it to the playlist, even though we don't call it that, but I'm kind of I'm kind of feeling like this series is coming to an end. Again, for those of you haters or whatever, just scrap it. Well, you know, if they've got a bunch of other Schlage locks or a bunch of other Quicksilver locks and one door with this, yeah, just, just replace it so that they'll have all the same key. But if they have a house full of these, and they're in beautiful condition like this. Honestly, there's not a whole lot of reason to not know how to rekey these. So anyway, thanks again for watching. If you have any questions or comments on any of our videos, post them in the comments section and we'll catch y'all next video. Boop. As always, thanks again for watching this video. Make sure you subscribe to the channel by clicking right here and checking out some of our other videos that we have linked we appreciate all of our subscribers. Please hit that thumbs up button and we'll catch y'all next video.